Hello everyone, I'm Josh Oaks and I'm so excited in this episode to introduce one of my favorite principles. I know there's a lot of them out there and you're all doing wonderful work, but I'm excited in this episode to talk and learn from this principle a few things about the COVID lifestyle, what's going on right now, a couple of the things in the future that a leader needs to know about their school. Now, if you're a PTA person, if you're a principal, an administrator, a parent anywhere in the country, maybe you're a law enforcement officer that's an SRO listening to this. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the threat of COVID and how that looks in the fall coming back to school, uh, what screen time looks like, how to make your school welcoming and why that's important. And you're going to hear from this principal. I think it's one of the best mission statements I've ever heard. And I really want you to hear this because I think in today's tumultuous uh, political climate, uh, this is going to be a really meaningful key takeaway that maybe you can adapt for your school. We're also going to talk, uh, if we have time, a, couple, a bunch of his students built little websites to shine online, to change the way they stand out online for the future. We're going to hear from him online about that. Today, we have my friend, uh, Mr. Donald Clayton. He's the principal at Mountain Brook Junior High School. Donald, welcome to the video. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you having me. Well, thank you. I got the chance to just to bring everybody up to speed to travel to your school and speak with students, parents, and we gave a staff speech as well, staff we training. Yeah, we set it up for that one whole day to kind of complete the whole cycle of, because we wanted it to really be embedded in everything instead of it just being one group. So I remember talking with you and kind of building that whole model um, before, before you came. I love it. Um, and I'm so grateful to work with you. I had such a good time. But let's get back to what's the mission of your school? Yeah, so as a school district, we talk about how are we engaging, challenging, effective for every one of our students. For us as a junior high school, we have this goal that is essentially to be the most welcoming school in America. That's our goal. I find that a lot of, um, I mean, if you think about, Josh, your middle school experience or junior high experience, I don't know that kids at that age, it, it's a time of growth and change, and they're trying to figure out who they are. And we kind of have the philosophy that if our kids know that they are wanted here and that they are welcomed here, that socially, emotionally, they're going to be in a better place, which helps our relationships, which is the cornerstone of what we do, and which helps us be successful in our education. So we run a lot of things through that lens of how do we be the most welcoming school in America. The funny thing is there is not a, um, there's not an award or a ranking system for it. Um, but we just say we're the most welcoming school in America. And I use that word all the time so that our kids and our parents and our faculty, um, they know that this is a place where you're accepted. Um, and, and more importantly, you're wanted, right? I think we all had experiences um, potentially where we've gone, we've had to go places and we didn't feel wanted. Um, and I, we don't, we don't want that for any of our um, teenagers, um, any of our thousand kids coming here. That's awesome. Accepted and most importantly, wanted, mm -hmm. which is terrific. And your students were terrific. Uh, well, maybe we'll show one or two of them here in a few minutes. Okay, talk to us. There, COVID changed the landscape. Since I last saw you, yeah. a very different world that we live in. Um, same kids, same parents, same school, same goal of instructing children and supporting them but totally different way that we were, we're able to do this. So what do you see the fall? We're, we're about a month away from you guys somehow opening your door. Yep. Um, you have a phrase. We're, uh, we're in July right now. Some of you listening or watching this podcast, we, we might, you might be listening to it months later, but COVID's not going away anytime soon as, with the data that we see. You say we're in July, which is both good and bad. What do you mean by that? Can you explain that? Yeah, I, I found myself recently saying it's already July, meaning we're about a month away from school. And in normal years, we're, it really is like only three or four weeks away from having the kids walk in the door. But in the way the data moves with this virus and the way the research moves, it's only July right now, meaning there's so much more shift and, and things that can happen over the next month, which educators and administrators in particular have always had to be super flexible um, and or at least carry that as a mindset. This is um, this is this is more flexible um, and more of a pivot approach than we've probably seen. And I think that makes it hard on adults, especially planners. 
um, because they want to know exactly what it looks like so they can be ready for it. Teachers are, are by nature planners and it's, it's, it's a particular challenge at this point um, to do that um, to get any kind of solid plan but we're you know we're moving in that direction um, to be able to open our doors um, or do a virtual option uh, depending on what families um, want to do we find some families who are I'm sure like most most of your listeners um, some some families that say we're going back I don't care what it looks like and then we have some that say I can't um, because of our certain condition or we don't want to do that and that's fine. We've got a, we're going to have a model for both and we love them and respect them and we'll educate them the same way. Um, whatever we're going to do, whatever we, we're here to serve them and to teach them and we're going to do it if they're online or, or walking around our building with masks on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a month out. We're all going to learn something absolutely new. Talk to us about the struggles in the fall, what that, what that looks like. You're a leader of an awesome school, thousand students or so. Uh, some of you who are listening or watching this, uh, actually, Donald, I put you on our speaking page. You and I in front of your thousand students, <laughs> I put you on there like, what's it like? What, what's, uh, and I was so honored to have you as kind of just setting the stage for other principals or leaders in schools, no matter what, how high or low they are on the totem pole. Uh, what do those struggles look like? COVID, screen time, delivering your message, safety, uh, becoming the mo staying the most welcoming school in the country. What are some of those struggles? Yeah, now that's that that is a, a a struggle when you start thinking about having to add protocols and procedures for safety, um, and still having a welcoming approach, um, and and in some some ways having conversations about do we allow visitors in our building in the middle of this, but still trying to be the most welcoming school in America. There's a natural little tension there that is that is something we we have to think through. We've, we've been thinking about like all of our things, activities, events, what's the heart of what that event does? And if, if the heart of that can be done virtually, let's do it. Uh, if it can't be done virtually, then let's think about what the alternative is to still get to the heart. It's okay for things to change. And I think that's a particular challenge for uh, leaders right now is to think about how like there are some there are some things that we've done that are super traditions that have been around for a while and we can't fathom not doing them um, but if we can still reach the heart of why we do them uh, that's an important that's an important question for us is is what's the heart why are we why are we doing this uh, I will tell you another uh, challenge that I think will be huge um, for leaders is you know, there's always this tension between leading and managing and there's a little bit of um, overlap in those um, it, it feels like there's more to manage now than there is to lead. And so I, I think, I, I think leaders are thinking one, two, sometimes five, 10 years down the road, but we're in a time where we really need to be with our people in the moment right now instead of down the road. I feel like leading a lot of time is moving forward and having people follow. I think right now leading might be turning around and huddling up with them where they stand. Mm -hmm. um, and so that a lot of times feels like management. Our, our adults, our teachers and staff members, they're gonna need us. Um, they're going to need our support. It's already a hard, I mean, it's already not a hard, it's already uh, takes a lot. It's a challenge to educate. And, and then there'll be new pieces that fold into that. And um, from a leadership standpoint, they're going to need us to, to be there with them. And they're going to need us to manage the place really well. That's a, that's a great thing. Turn around and huddle with them. Doing a lot of listening. And yeah. I think you do that naturally. I, I think, I think in a normal time, a leader does that naturally, you know when, but there's also that you also know when to turn out of that huddle and say, all right, we got somewhere to go. Um, and then you invite them on that journey. Yeah. Right now, it's hard to see that journey um, because everything is day to day and it's kind of in the now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, what was the summer like screen time wise? What did you hear from parents on, we, we got TikTok out right now. It's really hot. The government said, Trump said, we're going to shut it down maybe, right? And then we've got all kinds of screen time. We've got Netflix on the rise. Everything is just blowing up right now uh, for students. Students have this whole thing. What have you heard from parents 
from the digital realm, the threats that come from in the home, at school, in the kids' hands as they get these younger and younger? Yeah, you know, I, I think for our, our area and, and the conversations I have, it's, it's more about the amount of use on it. Um, I think they, I think we have, um, I think we have families who, who struggle with worrying about the, the threat piece of it, but I think a lot of time it's this, the, the uh, overall long-term effect of having it readily available without maybe a purpose, which is a lot of the work that I like you, that you do, Josh, is, you know, let's talk about why we have a social media, why we do this, as opposed to I have it, and then let's just use it when I want to use it. And so I think, I don't want to make it sound like we need to have very specific um, structures for, for it being a tool, but at the same time, I think we need to have expectations for it. And so when I network with kids and talk to them, you know, especially through this quarantine, they'll say, you know, I, I, found, I found some students who would say, I kind of, I kind of got to a point where I just couldn't watch any more, um, I couldn't watch any more Netflix or any more shows and I just took up walking, you know, or I took up journaling or writing and they might journal on their device or they might write on their device. So you would see this point, but then you'd have some who just continued to, you know, play video games or, or, or be online. And I, I think that the overall, the long-term use of it is, is without much of an expectation of, of like you think about curating your, we think about curating a space, like a wall. I have this wall and I want to put, you know, something on it. Well, I don't know that we always curate our time, right? Like what would we want to, if, if, if our life was a wall, what would we want hanging on it, right? And, it, and, and I don't know that we always do that with our time and be intentional with what the curation of our wall looks like. And that's probably, I don't hear people say that specifically, but I hear what they're talking about. I hear that being um, probably the, the depths of the, of the struggle of screen time. You hear, I mean, you hear it at all ages. I have young kids. Um, and so the friends of ours, I mean, they, they deal with it as well um, with, you know, just wanting the access to the screen time. It's, I think it's a real thing. Now, now you know, we're our school, we don't, we have them with their Chromebooks. Um, you know, we have a one-to-one -one model. And so we asked them to leave their devices in their locker, but that really goes back to the most welcoming school. We don't feel like we can be a community and a family if we're not looking each other in the eye when we're sitting at the lunch table, right? Um, we want to have that, that, that human interaction. Mm -hmm. And so we have a purpose for our devices, much like you talk about the purpose for your social media, you know, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and branding yourself and, and, and all those types of good things. Yeah, that's a really good point. I want to show you two things I've come up with lately, uh, just to, to show people that purpose thing. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. We've been teaching something recently. I love what you're talking about that curating. Here's my phone that I, this is something I've been sharing with parents. I have bucketed my, my apps, Donald, into yeah. strengths, into business, or like school, let's say, into weaknesses and oh, wow. finance and entertainment. And in the weakness, because I have to have these apps because I teach them to students, Instagram, Reddit, Facebook page to monitor our Facebook page, Facebook, right? Google News. The news is negative right now, guys. And I'm noticing, tell me if I'm wrong here, Donald. But I'm noticing that the news can bring you down. So I put it into a weakness bucket. I've been teaching students, if you're going to have Snapchat, put it into a bucket that calls it what it is. Does it take your time? And students are like, yeah, it takes a lot of my time. Whereas in the strength bucket, I've got Audible because I'm reading books via listening to them. YouTube, I only subscribe to micro documentaries that teach me something. Uh, podcasts. Spotify, because I'm usually jogging, running, or exercising. Google Keep is a great way to take notes. And I, when I'm, I'm strengthening myself when I take notes. And then micro, you know, audiobooks and stuff like that. But, and then there's stuff in the middle. My, I, I got to tell you, uh, parents, if you're listening to this, my Gmail took way too much of my time. My business, I, I'm definitely a Gmailaholic. <laughs> and people giggle like you're addicted to your inbox. It's true. So I put it in here. I have... I have dropped my Gmail use 50%. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not checking, I'm not going into this as much. I go, whoa, it's a weekend. I don't look in the business tab, right? So totally different way for me to look at it. And I think this, everybody's going to shift on how are we using curating that wall? I, I bring this up only because I want to curate these different buckets. Start with the strength, then go to business if I have to. Weakness is last. And I spend some time on entertainment if you must, right? No, that's so, good. I, I, I could see a lot of people uh, benefiting from that, I, myself included. Like I'll probably do that this afternoon. Right. It's kind of fun. And if you come up with something, please share it with me. I also want to share, this is just, I'm going to brag about your students. This is Abigail Abby Beta, 10th grader, Mountain Brook High School. Um, she went through your school, junior high, Mountain Brook. And um, this, is the, this is the program. Um, it's less, it, I, I'm so honored to get the chance to work with her. Her mom is Marie, such an outstanding family. And she highlights her tennis, her theater, community service. And this is what she did over the summer. Uh, she finalized this and published it. When you Google her, I'm so proud of this. The second thing that comes up is her little website. So now when a college Googles her, she's in 10th grade. It's not too early to build a website in junior high, middle school. Because now she launched it with, her, with Marie's permission. Her mom comes up. I mean, I, this is what I live for. And when you click on it, it goes to her website which comes up. She's got a sister that did this as well. I'm a junior. I play volleyball. I enjoy spending time with my friends and family. I volunteer. I mean, couldn't be more proud of these students. They have different little websites and different things. And when you Google Anna, you'll get the same type of thing. Google results come up first. So, uh, but lots of opportunity digitally, uh, lots of opportunity for pastime. But as you said, basically what we're getting at is a purpose instead of that pastime. Um, Mr. Clayton, what would you say to parents right now or PTA people who are struggling? What would you say to them to build some clarity on going back into the fall, whether it's screen time, whether it's just being welcoming offline and online? Yeah, I, I think we, we all have to take a posture of leadership everywhere. I think in our homes, um, I think we've got to take a posture of um, making sure that relationships are at the center of what we do. That's, we talk about partnerships with, between um, schools and parents and communities. It's more important than it has ever been. I think our, our students need to know that the adults in their lives are behind them. I think the teachers in our building and our staff members there in the building need to know that the parents are behind them um, as we walk and do to, to things that are unknown or shifting. Um, so the, the flexibility, the support, the relational approach, that's, that's what I would implore people to um, put their energy into. There's a lot to put your energy into. Um, and I've never, I've never really found situations where um, when you put them into human resources and you put them into relationships that it doesn't turn out in a positive sense. Um, and and now, now's the time we need to do that. I love that. That's a really great tip. Um, Donald Clayton, I'm so thankful for you, for all that you're doing and the students. I, when I first met you on the phone, it was great. But when I saw you around your students, I, I realized this is a guy that pours his heart into these students, into the school, into the staff, just the way your staff looks to you as a leader. I'm honored to know you, and I think your school is outstanding. So thank you for all that you do. Well, you're really kind, Josh. I really, I really appreciate it. Uh, the rest of you listening, watching, doing anything else, uh, we're honored that you'd listen, but also please rate, subscribe, and review. Share this with an educator or a parent. Uh, we're going through a lot. Reach out to us. We've got a free parent webinar on the front of smartsocial.com. It teaches you seven secret tips on how to navigate TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. We've got a really creepy tool, part of Snapchat that we teach you how to turn off. We teach you how to set up parental controls on your iPhone, on your Android, and we teach you a hidden Netflix feature they don't want you to know about. Please take that free training. It's live with me. I love doing it. It's one of my strengths is doing these live nerdy things online. Educators, if you want an idea on how to launch back in the fall or even next year, we give you a framework in our free webinar. And we give you a professional development certificate at the end if you want that as well. Thank you, everybody, for helping us teach students how to shine online. As always, remember to keep it light, bright, and polite because the kids are watching what we say online, offline, and everywhere else.
Thank you everyone for listening today and thank you to Mr. Clayton. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.